Hey guys, uh, this is Professor Eagle playing Stardew Valley. Hopefully, the intro actually is included this time. And I'm joined by um, Academy One Two Three. Do you want to say hi? Hello. Okay, great. All right, I'm gonna put the sign outside my door. Hold on. Okay, hi, hi. Just gonna check that we are indeed recording. Uh, yeah. Good. But I don't know what was wrong with it earlier. Like, I <coughs> did press for it to record, but it missed out the intro and a little bit of what I was saying. So it started with me um, telling people to do something down in the comments below, but I don't remember what it was. Yes. Yeah, that, that, I don't know why, that's a bit weird. Did you watch it? No, no, not yet, I've been a bit busy. That's cool, don't worry about it. Now, it's bigger, it's like, the bigger the game gets, the longer it takes to load up, so that's a little bit annoying. Although it does make sense, because my laptop is very slow. There's just more to load up. It's just more to load up. Yeah. And um, right now I'm trying to get cloth to uh. Yeah. Because I've got two sheep. I think one of them's ready for sniffing right now. Uh, Good. I called one Bermuda. Is there something wrong with my sheep and cows? Because they're not eating food. Like there's a bug. There are many bugs in this game, actually. Do you think? Can you look look it up if they're planning to update the game? I imagine if that was a bug to be found, it would have been patched out by now. I imagine. Yeah, but it's not. Unless I don't think it's because of the laptop now. Um. Okay. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think it's because of Jiminy? Mm, bugs are normally because of the game itself. Yeah, I was thinking that. Rather than the actual. Uh, rather than anything else. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, looking up cows, there sh doesn't appear to be any bugs. If you look oh, up you big barn, no uh, deluxe barn, no food disappearing. <laughs> so it says here, feeding cows. Cows eat hay placed on the barn's trough. Yeah, I've done that. And it's been full since day one. It's only the trough in the hen's barn that's depleting. Huh. Huh. Around a little more, see if there's any other. All the shops are massive. Lobster. How do I get lobster? Can you look about how I get lobster as well, please? I can't find anything on cows. Oh, no! Just look up the barn, like barn trough not depleting or something. Hmm. 
doesn't really come up with anything when I put in that, but... Hmm. That's weird. Alright, so not much luck on that end, so lobsters. Yeah. Lobster. You don't like this. What? Fish, fish. Get the rod. I've got a training rod, so I can actually... Um, I've been fishing a few things, actually. Anyway, yeah, you can get them in... Basically... You need a crab pot. How do I get a crab pot? Crafting. Crafting. Uh-huh. Um, I isn't it isn't in my recipes, I don't think. Um yeah, it says you need to craft it. Yeah, how do I get the crafting recipe? Does not say where I'm looking at the minute. I suspect um, it's from the community centre. Crab pot bundle. No, that's what you get from a crab pot. Um, it should say, uh... Tells me what ingredients you need, but not necessarily... Oh! Recipe sort ingredients. Uh, fishing level 3. Hang on, I've got to take a call. Oh, okay. I just gotta pause then. Back guys. So, um Kay just had to go take a call, he's back now. What I can gather it's um didn't say the source. But you need fishing level three. Okay. I'm gonna go do that now. Um... <laughs> so how have you been, Kay? Uh, not doing too great. My sleeping habits are not improving. Oh no. That's not very good. Sorry yeah. to say the obvious. <laughs> yeah, me. It's just annoying rather than anything else. Hmm. Yeah, I can the imagine. The most concerning thing about staying up for a long time is you lose. What? How do I describe this? You know how... Most of the time... You wake up today, don't you? As in, wake up to daytime, not wake up today. Most of the time you wake up as in, when you wake up, there is day? Yes. As in daytime. Yeah. Light. Well, sometimes I'm not sleeping too well. So what I happen to see is day to dark to day, then sleep. Oh. So you keep waking up and going back to sleep? No. What I see is I wake up during the day, but then I stay up to see night, of course, as you do. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes I don't sleep at all until like 7 o'clock in the morning. So then, it starts getting day about 4 o'clock at oh, this point. Yeah. 
certain season. So I'm still awake at four, so I'm seeing day come around again. Mm. Then I'm falling to sleep. And I'm waking back up today again, then tonight, then today, then sleep. And that's the cycle. Yeah. So I'm seeing from day to day, rather than from day to night, to day to night, to day to night. Yeah. That's not good, Kay. It throws you off, I'll tell you that much. I can imagine that. It's really annoying because I'm seeing day to day. So when you measure days, <laughs> it's quite hard for me because I'm measuring from day to day. Mm. Yeah. So I'm very focused on fishing right now. Don't blame you. Why, John? There's <laughs> more circular bloody souls. Who's John? If I may ask. My god, tutor. Oh. Also, incidentally, it's also named my kickboxing instructor. Not the same guy though, right? No, no, no. This guy is in his seventies. My instructor's only in only like late early thirties, late twenties. Yeah, that's the problem with British names being so common. The spelling's not the same either. A one with a H, one without a H. Yeah. Hate that. that. This one keeps uh, on moving up and down, it's annoying me. What does? The, uh... The fish. <laughs> but yeah, um, apparently you can marry in this game. Like, can you look up yeah. how many hearts you need to marry someone? Marriage. Marriage. Only available as someone who is marked for single and social tab. Yeah. Um, ten hearts of friendship. Ah, uh, okay. How many hearts are there in total? I don't know. But you need a minimum of ten. Apparently, your marriage candidates and bachelors, so males, is Alex, Elliot, Harvey, Sam, Sebastian and Shane. Yeah, I'm not marrying Shane, he's a grump. Your bachelorette are Abigail, Emily, Haley, Leah, Maru, and Penny. Okay. And you can. And, and children too. What? You can marry the kids? No. As in, you can have children. Oh, do you have to have a spouse's room in your house? Uh, it says... Um... I only got an anchovy after all that struggle. <laughs> you have children... Upgrade the farmhouse for the second time. Adding the nursery to get children. Oh, okay. So I don't need a spouse's room? Um. No. From what I can see, no. And is there like a whole marriage ceremony? Yeah. Wow. For which you require. Let's see. I saw it here. It's 
Three hundred wood. Oh, hang on. <laughs> you need wood for the ceremony. No, I'm reading it wrong. It says here, before proposing marriage, you need to earn ten hearts of friendship with your intended partner, which requires you to give them a banquet at eight hearts of friendship. You'll also need to repair the bridge of each Elliot's cabin, costing 300 wood, and upgrade the farmhouse at least once. I think yeah. for any spouse you need to um, upgrade the farmhouse at least once, because that's when you get a double bed. That's any spouse, yes. You can also divorce. Wow. Which I don't recommend. <laughs> Why not? What's it saying? It. <laughs> Fifty thousand gold cost. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's William. But you can cancel as well. As long as you do it the same day. If you divorce and cancel it the same day. Otherwise you're in debt. Can you go into debt in that game? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I can imagine that you could. Oh. What? Also, if you do divorce, their French level will return to zero. Mm. And the name will have X. What does the X mean? X as in X fiance, X wife. Oh, uh, okay. Not X marks the spot. <laughs> ah, also, listen to this. After the divorce, the spouse will move back to their old residence and will have negative interactions with the player, citing the failure of their marriage. They will also not accept any gifts from the player, and know that the player can still enter the ex spouse's bedroom or home as if the if the player had two friendship hearts the ex with the ex spouse. Any children from the far from the marriage will stay at the farmhouse. Any items the player had placed in the ex's room will be collected and um, placed in the chest the day after the divorce. Oof. In other words, divorce someone you can no longer give them gifts. And they're um their hearts will forever be zero. That sounds rough. Oh. But there are but such things as positive divorces, like in real life. Yeah, it's true. And like okay. I thought they'd go down that route, um in Stardew Valley probably... because there's hardly any conflicts and the only other conflicts that like, the only conflicts that do arise you're able to um Smooth them out. Smooth them them in. Smooth, smooth them, smooth them them out. That's the one. Uh, oh my God! There's even more here. According oh dear. <laughs> Players can visit the witch's hut in late game when where they'll find a shrine which can erase all ex spouses' memories for an offering of thirty thousand gold. Wow. Afterward, all ex spouses will have no memory of the previous marriage, allowing players to date and remarry them if they choose. Huh. Okay. <laughs> also, children from marriage can also be turned into doves at the witch's hut in exchange for prismatic shards. These, prima these permanently remove the children from the game, but further children can be had with another partner. Wait, turn the children into what now? Doves. My goodness! If the player is expecting a child and gets a divorce, the child will not be born or delivered. You get a stillborn? Yeah. Ay ay ay! And divorce spouses neither attend your wedding nor treat you normally during festivals. Ouch. That's a big oof. Yeah. Also, there's some bugs with it. Occasionally, a spouse's heart meter will drop overnight by approximately two hearts for some reasons that are completely unknown. Mm. So, tip. Don't get married unless you're willing to pay a 50,000 divorce cost, and on top of that, a 30,000 cost, 
at a British shrine. Um, I want to get married and stay married. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, if you're a same-sex couple, you will adopt. And if you're a heterosexual couple, then obviously you'll make a child. So. Okay. Hear that? So I'm watering be... my plants. I'm, I always focus a lot when I water my plants, and I don't know why. I wonder what certain friend of ours is doing at this time. Free Firefly? Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's fine. I have no idea what he's doing, though, to answer your question. Playing Foxhole. Oh. Yeah. He's... He's, he's replaced us. He's found buddies in Foxhole. <laughs> well, someone has to. Replace us? No. They don't have to replace us. No one has to replace us. No one's gonna replace us. Not even he thinks that. <laughs> he won't, we won't let him replace us. How long have we all known each other? Do you really think that's gonna happen? I don't know. If he, walk, if he turned around and turned out being quite heartless, then. Because some people can change at the flip of switch. Not saying that Firefly does, but it's possible. Anyone's capable of it. But I highly doubt that's, that's going to happen. Hmm. So I need 10 wheat and 5 bok choy. Oh, Pierre! Oh, oh yeah, I need to check on my... Um... Can I trim you yet? Bermuda is too young to be sheared. Beats it, Bermuda. How dare you! What? Scary <laughs> people. Hmm? I'm out of- I'M OUT OF STRAW! NO! <laughs> Just gonna double check the sealer. Yep, I'm out of straw. I'm out of hay. Why do you call it a sealer? Sealer? Why do you call it a windowsill? What? Why do you call it a windowsill? I- I don't. You do. No, I don't. Speed lot in Welsh is windowsill. Well, I'm not speaking in Welsh. I'm speaking in uh, French. Because it's a French word. In order to differentiate it from the fact that we're Welsh speakers, we tend to refer to it as silo. Well, I'm not normal, okay? Well, I can agree to that one. Thank you. Supply shop. Hey, give me all your hay. Don't be so demanding. You give him money in exchange for the hay. Well, yeah, I do. As Pierre might say, there are no free lunches. I'm stuck. I'm I'm stuck. <laughs> oh boy, you. How stuck? Um, I'm just stuck in the woods. Cause I did make a few paths, but they seem to have failed me. Wow, what's the use of having paths then? Oh, well, I didn't make a proper path, uh, like a stone path. I didn't make that. Um, so, ten wheat and five bok choy. Yeah, I don't oh, know I exactly should... know how much... I don't know if you need to pay for a wedding. That information wasn't presented to me, but... I 
I got an interesting game a few days ago. What'd you get? It's commonly referred to as Kotor, or the full title is Star Wars Jedi Knights of the Old Republic. Well, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. The game's um, at least 13 what? years old. 13 years old? Yeah. You got a game that was 13 years old. You're a bit behind the times, mate. Not at all. The game still stands up to scratch modern. Mm. In fact, when I saw it, I thought it was early 360 era and then Connor pointed out to me that this that they were the original graphics is not being upscaled in any way oh it just cost a lot of money to make the thing they probably paid a, they probably put a lot of money into it yeah but you can see it's crafted with care because the game is amazing Okay. Um, um Bok Choy. You're a character called Ta Dark Revan. I was pretty sure it's Bok Choy. Yeah, you did say Bok Choy. And wait. Um, let's have a look. And on the 11th, it's Jodie's birthday. So, yeah. I kind of miss um, like the pen and paper because then I can like joke about about um, like my yeti biting people and stuff, and that's kind of fun. Yeah. Because like you know the frozen bite thing that the wizards can do. Yeah. Yeah. No. Get out of the way, sheep! Oh, you know... So it's worse in Wales, you know, when you're driving down the lanes, next thing you know, you just see a sheep on the road. That reminds me of the time when uh, my dad chased sheep for this car. <laughs> what? I mean, not to scare them, he didn't mean to scare them, but we just wanted to carry along and along. So we ended up chasing the sheep with the car. Being sure um, not to hurt them, obviously. Yeah, I once saw a sheep. I was coming home from school. I once saw a sheep running right alongside the bus. Or trying to. Oh dear. Yeah, it was it was an odd sight, alright? Yeah, well, I mean, it's also a bit dangerous. I kind of feel sorry for the poor thing. It was quite safe for the coast side of the road or something like that. It was, you know, safe, but it was still a bit of a weird sight because all you saw was just a sheep. Hmm. Just there. Mm -hmm. I wonder how sheep see humans. Probably these weird things. These weird... I mean, they don't even know what a monkey is, so they can't even call us walking monkeys. Connor, do you really want to be getting about two of those? Three of those in one fight? Oh well. Never mind. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming night time soon. Let me milk you. Let me milk you. I'm only, I'm only getting average goat milk.
Who's your favorite cartoon character? Uh, good question. It's probably um, a character from uh, a show called. Um, Dragon. Dragon. Dra <laughs> no. Um, Legend of the Dragon. I don't think I watched that. You probably never heard of it. Why is it like an anime or something? No, no, no. It's a cartoon, but it's one that is you know, oldish. Watching it when I was growing up. That's fair. It's about the it's about the Chinese zodiac symbols. That's cool. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's called Legend of the Dragon. Me and my brother were trying to find it for ages. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've been looking for the last two years. Trying to find this one thing. And have you succeeded? Yes, we have. Nice. So it's about a legend. It's about um, these twins. Which... One boy, one girl. But the opening's kind of stupid in a way. How so? I know. The opening says only one will wield only one will wield the golden dragon, and the and the other she must decide her destiny. Right. Mm -hmm. Which it is one boy and one girl. And the mystery is, who's meant to get it and who isn't from the beginning? Oh, but she must decide her destiny? Kind of suggests that it's a girl? It suggests it's the female twin, doesn't it? Yeah. It's something I've noticed... You, you, I don't think you've noticed as a child because you weren't really paying attention to the words much, would you? Yeah. But as you get older, you pay more attention and... Well, I'm looking like... Hang on a minute here, there's something wrong. <laughs> Unless the guy ends up being trans. No, no. Because it clearly states that only one must get choose the destiny. And it's very ambiguous. It doesn't say the male or female. It's only within the next line or two does it mention that the that she must decide a destiny. Yeah, so if the guy ends up being trans, then it could be him as well. Or or future she. A TV show made for eight-year-olds during a time when we were about eight years old will not have transsexual people in it, especially considering the time. It's unlikely to have transsexual people in it. It wouldn't have it. Period. When we were growing up, it's only recently that transsexuality and bisexuality and also homosexuality has become normal or common to be shown in kids' cartoons, or at least... Um, hinted towards massively. Whereas before, you wouldn't get it. Really, any ones that did would normally either be bad-mouthed or forgotten about or only aired for a very small amount of time. That's just the way it is. Did that show ever have an end where they showed who got the golden dragon? No. Okay, no. The first episode does the person who becomes the Golden Dragon does become the Golden Dragon in the first episode, which is why she must decide her own destiny. Oh, and is it the girl? No. But then who becomes Otherwise, the Golden Dragon? It, no, she... Uh, this becomes a bit complicated. She does, but doesn't. How so? How so? Hmm, how do I explain this? Okay. So... They become what's known as the Double Golden Dragon, which is the first time in history. 
where whenever they resonate in a way, they both become the golden dragon. Okay. But the problem is, one of the reason the reason why the golden dragon didn't choose her originally is because of her personality. She wanted too much power. Right. She was a very power hungry person. And when her brother, Anne, got it, she went crazy. Tried to kill him. That's a bit rude. What do you do if you're a power hungry being or power hungry person and someone took something you thought was rightfully yours, which you don't actually have a say in because it's the golden dragon bracelet which chooses who gets it, not you. So did she kill her brother then? No, God no. They they um just became they were she became the shadow dragon afterwards. Which is essentially the dark ver the evil version of the um golden dragon. Okay, so it became into she became a bad guy. Yes. Because she was power hungry. Which I suspect is the reason why the uh bracelet never chose her. She thought she deserved it rather than Because you don't choose. The Gordon Dragon is not a choice. It mm. chooses you. It deems you worthy. It judges you suitable for its role. Not you judge yourself suitable for the role or just because you've trained for it doesn't mean you'll get it. Yeah, I got it. In other words, it's its own sentience, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And she thought, because she trained harder, she'd be her brother in every fight, practically. She thought she deserves it and she should have it. Okay, yeah, because they don't know anything about the narrator, do they? No. No, not that. No. No. But the other one must choose their own destiny to support the Golden Dragon, take it. Because if you said how um, his sister was to defeat him, she would get the Golden Dragon. Mm. Though he was chosen, but the thing is, because she wasn't chosen as the Golden Dragon, she couldn't really use him effectively, even if she had him, or had it. Because the Guardian is chosen, anyone can wield the bracelet as long as you defeat the Guardian or anyone wielding it. Mm -hmm. You can absorb it into yourself, so to speak, in a way, and put it on and gain its powers. But you is that what she tried to do? It. It's what she tried to do, yeah, but the problem is, it didn't work for her because obviously he won. Yeah, with the power of the Golden Dragon. No, um, without the Golden Dragon, of course. They fought just normal, no dragons, just them. Because it, you take on the personification and their powers, not the summon one, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Um, but you, but only the Guardians, which are the people which are chosen by the the Zodiac fans of power can actually use them to their full extent. Wait, you lost me, what? Basically, anyone can wield the bracelets as long as you beat the current wielder. Mm -hmm. But only the people that are chosen by the bracelets can actually use them to their full potential. Okay. So say now the evil, the bad guy in it, Zodiac Master, was to get every single Zodiac. So he couldn't use them effectively. He's not been chosen as the guardian of any of them. But he could use their powers, for example, just not to its most powerful as they can be. Okay, so even if the girl managed, managed to steal the golden dragon from the boy, she wouldn't be able to use, use the power that effectively? Correct, because she's not been deemed suitable to be the Golden Dragon Guardian by the Golden Dragon. Okay. So, but she could become a Shadow Dragon because it uses Yan, 
Lang energy or is it Yin energy? It, it would be Yin energy. Yin energy is the bad one. Yin, yeah, Yin energy. So it's just the way it goes. It's an interesting one though. But the funny thing about her is she's not, though she's a bad guy, uh, well, bad an enemy. She isn't at the same time. Mm -hmm. She has full control over what she does, whereas Aang, being the guardian, doesn't. Oh. Basically, in some ways, she's much better off. Hmm. She's not bound by any duty. That's not a very good analogy. You become a bad guy and then you have freedom. No, she always had that freedom. The one who chooses their destiny gets to choose how they live their life. Oh, but Anne, the, um, Anne didn't choose his freedom because he the, he the thing chose him. When you become the Golden Dragon, you don't get a choice. Yeah. You must defend the temple. You must become the temple. So, you must become the temple guardian. You have no choice. You just have no choice. Yeah. But she could choose to train the next people to become the Golden Dragon. She could either become a bad person and try and take it. She could aid him in his quest. Could could just forget everything about it if she wanted. She has that freedom because she's not bound by any of the rules according to the Zodiacs. Hmm. Whereas I'm mean, that is. Hmm. Well, we can still make this better for her, I guess. But she didn't see it that way. Because in her mind, she must be the golden dragon. Hmm. It's quite good, though. Yeah, I might look into it. Can you send me a link to it on uh, Facebook or something? No, I have Amazon Prime. Really? Good luck finding it any other way. That sucks. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not a DVD or anything. That sucks. No, the problem is it it wasn't that popular. Yeah, let's just say there's a huge reason why a lot of people have never heard of Legend of the Dragon. Well, it sounds like it wasn't popular though. It was not. Oh, but it sounds really good. It is. It's excellent. It's well made. The acting's very well done. Yeah, Spider Rock. No, that was quite popular actually. Yeah. Spy Riders had two seasons. Um, another one, another excellent one is Spider Riders. Yeah, no, um, Kicks. Yeah, it became, it was on, uh, Kicks. Was it, um, because I think, I think it was on Jetix, on, um, the Dragon was Jetix. Yeah. Yeah. Kazuka was Jetix as well when it was on TV. Yeah, because you had Kicks, Jetix. And you had Pop. They all yeah. sound like drug names. Not they were they're old. Now, really, it's just Jetix you have. It's old kids' cartoon uh, channels. What we had growing up. Yeah, it's got um, an X with like an I or a J in the middle. Mm. And Kick is quite. It's what we grew up watching and what channels we had growing up. Okay. You also had Jet. There was quite a few. Hey, did but you try anyway, out, yeah. uh, Giga no Kitaro? I think I mentioned it a few times. 
You have. Yeah. It's really Not good. seen the originals, but. From what I can gather, though, it's roughly the same every time. Doesn't really change much. Mm. But Spider Riders is a good one to check out as well. Growth on that one, too. I'm guessing most people listening to this video will not even know half the stuff I'm on about. Yeah, but that's okay. They'll learn. Well, I'm on about stuff that are no longer available now, really. This is stuff I grew up with when I was... Oh, for God's sake, how old, how old were we, Connor? Um, I... I mean, I don't know. I mean, after dad, we're dad, about four to ten. This is between four and ten years old for us. Hmm. No, four and eight. Yeah, four and eight. Because last time I ever saw Legend of Dragon on TV was, I think I was seven. Okay, can you lock something up for me, please? What? Sorry, to, sorry to distract you, but um. Can you look up what I need for a mill? Mill. Mill? No, mill. Mill. Yeah, I put nil. <laughs> and it's zero nil! Nah, that just means zero zero. <laughs> I can do commentary. Um... Build cost is two and a half thousand gold. Oof. Two and a half? Yeah. 2,500? Yeah. That's not too bad. I can get that. 50 stone, 150 wood, 4 cloth. 4 cloth, dang it. <laughs> I'm and four you cloth. need a 4x2 four size space. 4x2? Four yeah, so the amount of space it can be put in is 4x2. Oh, that's fine, I've just cleared that up now. The construction will take two days. I've got a cutie now. You. We'll get a next. Uh... Nice. I got a Yamalama Ding Dong! A yellow what? I got a Yamalama Ding Dong! What is that? Um. What is it? Yams! <laughs> That's what it is, I got yams. No, oh, yams, poor yams. Why poor yams? It's not like they held captive, captive or anything. Well, they are not held captive, K. That's sentient. Yeah, right. They could be sentient. If they were, I'd be terrified. Why? What would yams do to you? Yeah, what could they do? They could swear at me and insult me and do all sorts of nasty things. So I don't trust them. I need to get five, five yams. All week from today, we're holding the Stardew Valley Fair in Town Square. It's a big event of year, drawing people from all over the humble town. You can have a grand display the event. Okay. I was pressing X instead of whatever. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, five yams. So, what do you look forward to when uh, the llama invasion has ceased? When this uh, llama invasion has ceased, I look forward to going back to college and kickboxing and Nine's house. 
basically just going back to how my life was just before this, which is almost no different, except for going to Ninth House College and kickboxing. Mm. Like early today, I ran into some uh, people, and they asked, "Are you not bored during all this time?" And I said, "No." How? They asked, and I said, "Well." When basically this is what you did anyway, in, even though I can't go to college nines or kickboxing, essentially nothing's really changed for me. Hmm. I'm bored all day being stuck inside do playing games. It, how are you not bored doing that? I said, that's my life. Hmm. That sounds a little bit sad, not going to lie. My life just consists of going to Ninth House, going to college, going home, going to kickboxing and playing games. Oh, and writing and reading. That's basically my life. Hmm. I'm not like you. I don't go to a lot of places. I don't do a lot of things. I forgot to, forgot to check on my chickens. No, my chickens! Which is why, during times like this llama invasion, I'm less likely to suffer. Because I can still go and see my nine. I just can't go into a house. Yeah. Your nine's really sweet. I like your nine. Yeah, she had a hard, she had a hard life though. A lot of people that are cool have had a hard life, to be honest. Then again, we'll probably have, we'll probably end up having a hard life by the time we're men at nine's age. I've already had a hard life, mate. <laughs> and so are you to an extent. Oh, oh you misunderstand what I mean. Everyone's lives will be probably considered hard because of the way things change or the way things are for the next generation of children. It's just how it goes. It's like, you know, we find things too expensive currently. Mm -hmm. You know, my nine and my mum always said, I remember when you can do this and that concerning price. When you could get, like, a Freddo, for example, it was 20 pence. I remember that. Freddo's too, existed back they... then? Pardon? Freddo's existed back then? Freddos. Yeah. They've been around for God knows how long. And uh, they used to be like twenty pence. No, they used to be. How old did they? How much did they used to be? Like ten pence. For Freddo Connor. Connor. What? Freddos used to be ten pence, didn't they? Freddos. Yeah. Freddo's used to be ten pence when I was young. No need to yell at him, dude. <laughs> he's got a, he's got uh, headphones on. Okay. He's got on. Maybe there was a small need to yell at him. Only small. No, a big one. Okay. <laughs> if you say um, so, mate. But when I was younger, they were twenty pence. Now they cost like boy. Now they cost like forty nine pence mm. for a single Freddo. Mm. And by the time we're, uh, you know, my nine's age, and we've got grandchildren and stuff or whatever, we'll probably end up saying we remember a time when they were forty nine pence or things like that. Oh, we're because gonna sound so old. We will be. The Don't say thing is, that, okay. thing is, what we, the sensibilities of our generation, will be completely different to the sensibilities of the next generation of people. What was right for our generation is going to be wrong for them, or different. It's like why you see a lot of TV shows which are called 
it was alright in the 80s. Or alright in the 90s. Mm. Because different sensibilities, they're not wrong, they're just different. Mm. So, meaning, when we're that old, we will have completely different sensibilities than most modern children of that time that's going to be called modern. Hmm. Yeah, the, the aspect of time and the concept of time is just so skewed and weird. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. It's like they say that you'll see a lot change if you could live a hundred years. But if you ask anyone who's lived a hundred years, most of the time you'll hear they've not nothing's changed at all. Yeah, because life is still life, and life is still a poopy head. <laughs> the thing you'll mostly hear is, what simply change is what people consider important, whereas what's overall hasn't changed. Yeah, I guess. Things just get replaced, not changed. Hmm. So, like, most generations of ours, ours use social media to communicate rather than voice. Whereas I, well, I'm old fashioned, but I prefer voice communication, which is why I'd much rather be talking to you first to face to face. And not over the phone. Yeah. I get that. I don't mind talking to people on the phone, though. I hate talking to people on the phone. Really? I actually hate it. Hmm. It gives you, it gives you an excuse not to talk to the face to face. I wouldn't say it gives you an excuse. Yeah, a lot of people use it as one. Oh, I can just phone them up later. And then the problem is that someone point out to me. And it's quite true, actually. The problem with the phones as well is, before, going back to times where you had to arrange meetups like weeks before, or like two days before, using a house phone, for example, you would have to arrange a meetup. And you couldn't just cancel halfway through like you can now. Mm. Like... If something came up, you'd have to clear up your schedule for that. I got a diamond! Sorry. The quarry Fine. opened up so I can actually mine for stuff. Without yeah. having to go to dangerously deep levels. Good, good. But it was pointed out to me that we, the modern generation, are in a way suffering. How are we suffering? Because, say now we make a, an arrangement to meet up. We can send a text to each other saying we will be... We can't come on that day. Something came up, can't we? Hello? Yeah, yeah we can do that. Sorry, I was waiting for you to but continue. But before... Before phones came around, you said you meet, met up at 7 o'clock in X place. You had to be there. There was no cancelling. There was no... Sorry, can we change it to this? You met up. Yeah. You couldn't just go on the phone and suddenly you'd get new priorities. Yeah. Which is one way, I guess, in which we're suffering because we will suffer that way because if we can do that, meaning there's a lot less urgency or a lot less reason to uphold a meeting with someone. I mean, I think it lets us be more flexible because then you can arrange things last minute as well. Yes. Which, I don't 
I mean, yes, I hate phones. Yes, I do. But... Yeah, but you still have a smartphone, and I'm still with a brick phone, so you can't really say that you hate it that much. I don't have a smartphone, because that's what I have. However... You can always change it. Phone, if this phone got lost, broken, or stopped working, I wouldn't be that bothered. I would be. I wouldn't be able to contact you anymore. That would kind of suck. But, you you know, you can see what I'm trying to say, though, can't you? Like, for me, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would just be, oh, my phone broke. Okay. You wouldn't try to get a new one? Well, yes, they are... They're a necessity in this day and age. Whether or not you care for your phone, whether or not you need one, they're a necessity. Mm. Be it a simple brick phone, be it a smartphone, you, they're necessary. Yeah, I get that. That's how modern society works. You can't be without a phone in modern society. It's completely impractical. But, on the other side of the coin, it's also nice to just leave your phone at home than literally just go, no, I'm not going to use my phone, I'm going to keep it there, and not be contacted by anyone at all. Thing is, I have a lot of people who I kind of, I don't necessarily look after them. But I okay. make sure that I'm there for them. So if whenever yeah. they need me, I gotta make sure I'm there, you know? Yeah, I know. But, again, phones are handy in a way, but a problem with phones is it also causes this kind of situation. Where it can also cause this kind of situation we're in now. Say now we weren't in lockdown. Or no, say now we weren't in llama. Let's call it llama, shall we? If we wasn't in La if we weren't in Llama, then um, we would um, then the phones would also give you an incentive to not meet up in person because your brain should be going, oh, I can just call them later for video call, or I can just give them a call later. I don't really have to worry too much about meeting up or talking in person. Hmm. My brain didn't think that way. The only reason why I need to contact you, Bet, and them is through phones. It's simple. You live further away from me. It's not like I can just hop on on a bus during this time anyway. Mm. Or walk and go, hello. I have to literally hop on a bus to see any of you. Yeah, which sucks, because like, a lot of us live in a different town. Like, even um, with her. Even with her lives in a different town. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just the way it goes. But, that's life. Yeah, and you've got to really, like, put up with the attitude, which I commend. But, you can only put out the attitude for so long, you can't endure everything, okay? Life is life. Learn that the hard way. Life will give you whatever life gives you. What you make of it, now that's up to you. Wise words from K. Whether or not you choose to let it beat you down, it's up to you. If you let it win, if you let all the harshness of life beat you, then what are you? At the end of the day, it is simply, it simply is. Decisions are yours, yet some are not. Some are made for you. 
most are yours. Do with information what you will, because once you're told information, no one can tell you how to use it. They can just tell you the information. Is that not so? Well, yeah, I guess that's kind of how it can go at times, but not always. That's why life... It's just life to me. For me, life is a battle. A constant battle. But I don't mind it that much, because there are good times as well. But I suppose that's why I'm not particularly attached to a lot of things, I suppose. Because who needs the attachment? The more attached you are to something, it's like... If you compare most to my nine generation, a lot of them will never admit they love something. Yeah, they weren't very materialistic back then. It's and I kind of feel that kind of mindset. It's not about being... It's not that they weren't materialistic. That's not it at all. Then what is it? The problem is, anything that they love could have easily been torn away from them. Whether that be love of a person, whether that be love of a feeling to be taken away from them that easily but modern generation you can admit what you love when you love and when you want because it can't be taken away from you that easily yeah I guess but in when my nine was growing up if you admit you loved anything then chances are it'd be taken away from you in one way or another. Which is why a lot of older people aren't freely, don't freely show their love for their family. Okay, so that, that's where, very sad. It's just that they come from a time where if you did, it, it you could get it taken away from you. Love for family, really? Yeah. Anything during that time, if you expressed love, or, you know, anything that showed that you wanted something, it could easily be taken away from you. Mm. As my line puts it, it's a different time. I mean, it's not really, but... You might as well consider it so, because we can share what we love without fear of it being taken away. Mm. But obviously a lot of people that are nines aid and such. But not everyone's in those shoes, because there are people of like the lower classes and such, where their stuff does get taken away quite easily. Yeah, but... On a general point of view, it is far easier to show and openly admit what you love in the modern day, because we don't exactly have that kind of problem. In a general point of view, I think it's still the opposite, because most people existing are poor. That's true, but, but to be honest with you, how you define poor changes with each generation. Yeah, because the poverty line raises as such, or does it lower? I can't remember. No, the poverty line stays the same, but the quality of life improves. Gets more expensive normally. Life, the cost of living normally rises with each generation. Yeah. But it's just how um, they they lived. Same with how we live, I guess. Just is. 
That's how their lives were. This is how our lives are. And yeah, that's not much we can pretty do about straightforward. That. It's just how our lives are, really, at the end of the day. You can fight it all you want. You can believe it or it's going to change, depending, because you want it to change. But it won't. As you can, as you know, I developed quite a certain overview on life. As you know. Yeah, I know. Some would argue that my unchanging opinion is bad. I wouldn't but... say it's bad. It's just against the main idea. And against what society wants you to think of. And I admire that. It, it's like, my nine, she believes that no one used to live, no one lives how she used to live any, lives anymore. No one, no one lives like that anymore. That's what my nine chooses to believe. In reality, there are still people living the way that she used to live. Either through choice, or through no choice of their own. I don't think many people choose to live. Oh wait, no, there's a television program where celebrities choose to live in a, a more difficult environment. So, no mind. Problem is they're doing that for money. Memory. I wonder about people which have nothing, like you know, like people which live in places you don't see, places that are never recorded, places that are normally off, far off the beaten track, so to speak. Hmm. You see, you don't see them a lot because the news don't show them. No one shows them because the Nobody news profits. Nobody wants to see it. No, the news profits off misery. All right. So why would you show them when you can't profit off them? But you can profit off someone showing, for example, a lost child. So they prioritise that. They don't prioritise showing how some people live to open up people's eyes, but something that will give them money. Yeah, that's really messed up. So, the news are meant to be impartial. They're meant to show both good and bad. I think they see that the, the see it more that they're supposed to be non-political, especially BBC. They're meant to be completely impartial politically as well. Yeah, but not every single news uh, agent is. Some of them are openly. Yeah, that's allowed. That's their in their individual beliefs are allowed as long as it b remains individual. What? I come here to bring you two small mouth basses. Oh, I gotta catch them. <laughs> And uh, the news can not be show. should not be openly politically um, one way as it is. They're meant to remain impartial as they can possibly be. You know, mm. they choose not to. Mm. I mean, have you ever heard of the BBC Trust? No. Have you ever wondered what stopped the BBC from, oh, I don't know, being stupid with the money they get given, for example? Sensibility? Incorrect. The BBC Trust was literally made because they were doing being stupid with taxpayers' money. They were buying expensive office furniture, they were lining their own coffers, so to speak, they were making things ridiculously expensive. So, an organisation was made called the BBC Trust. If the BBC want to do anything that's going to be costly, above a certain amount, they have to ask the BB BBC Trust if they can do it. So say now they wanted to buy some new office furniture, right? 
because they needed to be make their workers comfier because regulations had changed for example they would have to ask the BBC Trust if they could do that because if left to their own devices they would pay like a thousand pound plus for one chair and only for one person and that would normally be someone high up rather than paying a less amount but getting one for everyone and it was introduced because the big wigs so to speak were not doing that so whose idea was it to instigate the, the BBC Trust? I think it was the government. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's the reason why they were introduced, because they were being stupid and literally blowing the money, so to speak, on big office parties. Mm. And thing. So obviously someone had to step up. The BBC aren't happy about it most of the time. Oh? Mom, I'm busy. Hello? How are you eating? Not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so come on over now. Nice to meet. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Hmm? But You'd think they'd be able to regulate themselves, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're uh, human beings, not really. Some humans can... That's the argument that they said, anyway, when they introduced the BBC Trust. That you'd think they'd be able to regulate themselves. It's like, um, on a podcast I like this, or audiobook, I guess, no, is it a podcast? Technically, it'd be a podcast, I think. Um, audio series. Um, they took the mick out of Karl Marx. Okay. You know who that is, don't you? Yeah, Marxist. Marxism. Um, communism? Became the only... Marxism became socialism, yeah. And it... They took the mick by saying, um, by creating a society where you expect humans to judge themselves and not abuse the system and, you know, keep themselves at bay. Yeah, it's unfortunate that most pol political systems are built like that. They're built to, on the expectations that humans aren't going to abuse their power. And that's yeah. just wrong. And they, and they said, um, what were you expecting to happen? Hmm. Obviously making a joke at the expense of someone expecting that humans judging themselves and keeping themselves in check would be a good be, would be a good idea. Yeah. But again, computers wouldn't work either to keep humans in check human nature is too black and it's not black and white yeah. yeah like you need humans to judge humans but you need humans to judge those humans yeah you and just need everyone to monitor each other and it just makes a big mess but if you use computers on the other hand you run into another mess Say now someone, for example, had done something bad. Say now someone, you programmed a machine to believe, and this was the police, any murder is bad. Anyone killing another is bad. Punishable by jail or death, for example. Hmm. Say now this machine, say now you, I don't know, someone was hurting your mother, so you had no choice but to kill them because they wouldn't stop and they tried to kill you too. Okay? That would be self-defense, wouldn't it? Ah. Yes, it would. But one thing. Now, what if a machine was judging you? All they know is, you killed him. Either to save your own life, 
as from from the perspective and the programming of that computer, you merge someone. But you can add within the algorithm the factors of X, Y, and Z. You can change yeah, the algorithm the and make it more complex. There's too many factors. Hmm? For the problem is there's just too many factors with human nature. Not always. Sometimes there the computer black, can blue, be powerful gray, enough to green, compute red. all the factors. But you can't do that. Because, unlike with humans, actually humans judging another human, the computer will judge it as a whole, not really taking in the circumstances too much. Whereas, with human actions, circumstances matter more than the action. How so? Elaborate. Again, to manslaughter, for example, it's a form of murder. Accidental, yes. This, this, it's just a different circumstance. But if you put that in slightly different circumstances, you've got murder on your hands. Not manslaughter. Or, look at it this way. Someone's judging your case. Though it is manslaughter, that judge could view it as murder, so you're charged for murder. Hmm. Because it's highly contextualised. It's not set. Which is why humans are a bit awkward to be judged, especially by a computer. Because a computer would see it as just what it is. Whereas a human... I don't believe you know enough about computer algorithms to be able to make this argument, Kay. The point is, computer algorithms are black and white. Not always. No, they are black and white. Uh, because have they, you got experience? They can't think for themselves. They can't think for themselves, but you can put enough um, factors within them to make it complex enough so it makes it look like they're thinking for themselves. But again, they're still making a decision based on black and white. How are you so sure? Because... They don't... It's pretty simple. It, a good way of doing it is, say now you import a code into a computer. We would we did this in ICT. Um, to that teacher was trying to show us the limitations of computers, right? Mm -hmm. So we asked it to plug in a variable. If we put in, I can't remember what this variable was, but we put in a variable. When we change that variable, it changed according to that. But when we change another variable within that variable, something happened. It it made an error. When we changed in a algorithm which caused it to evolve with the new data, we ran into problems. Because we we set it so that it would go good, bad, or this is good, or this is bad, or rate it from, I think it was rated from good to bad, so, and a few in between. So what we did was we put in some stuff that were grey, as in morally grey. The computer put error next to them. Not good, not bad, but error. Because it couldn't analyse the situation. Maybe because that computer wasn't powerful enough, Kay. It For the programming, what you put in, the computer could only judge it based upon its algorithm. And its algorithm... It would be the same even on a powerful computer. I don't think so. Everything runs on algorithms, even our brains do. Yeah, but our brains can can coordinate and can work with complex situations. And so can some, can some computers. I, I admit it, not all computers, but some computers. Either way, 
it, the chance of it being very a very black and white judging would be high. Exactly, but not a hundred percent. In current technology, it would be a one hundred percent black and white judging. I don't but think so. Maybe you should current, research this up and then come back to it. With current with current technology, yes, we can't make AI that can think for itself. We can't make VI at the minute. Oh, well, we can only make basic AI. No, but you can make, build AI for situations that can make it look like it's thinking for itself. If you just encounter all the factors that can be thought up, and you plug it in, and if it's a powerful but enough computer, happens, then it can make it. But what happens when something you didn't account for gets inputted? And that's a human error, and that can be the same case for a human case in the court with humans. There can be factors that cannot be considered. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But humans are able to change the verdict and capability in the way they're thinking on the fly. Computers only have an algorithm for their thinking. But you can have other computers assessing the, the first computer. That's true, but... You'd have to have that algorithm, you'd have to have that situation set in, in the first place onto at least one of those computers. And that's same impossible. with humans, you'll need the humans to be there in the first place for it to work. Oh yeah. So what's your point? That current technology would mean that unfortunately you could not make something that could adapt that easily. But they're working on it. And we're almost there, actually. Uh, hmm, take a few years, at least. Yeah, without the llama invasion. I mean, technology is improving a lot. I mean, just look at smartphones. But smartphones aren't designed to be used the way that we use them, even now. Yeah, humans are too clumsy to have smartphones with them. No, it's just... It's more to do with the design of smartphones in the first place, rather than humans. It's more to do with the reason for their design. Because... Smartphones are... You're not a pagerist, don't you? Hmm? Connor, don't go that way. I didn't help out, did I? You could have done. Um, you know, smartphones were an advancement of pages. They were the next step up, so they were made for emergency contacting. So, you know, you had to send an email to someone, and you, I don't know. I don't think smartphones were made for emergency contacting. Maybe brick phones? Sure. They were made for inner pinch emails, inner pinch looking things up, inner pinch situations. That's what they were made for. Emergency in a pinch contact. Not anymore. My voice just broke, sorry. That's the problem. Phones are still going off that design basic in the way that they're behaving. Kind of like how education's still going off the design of factory workers. Yeah, but phones don't... have not been optimised for the conditions that we're using them for. And there will be another few years before they even are. Oh, uh, do they not generate back? Pardon? I'm back at the quarry and it seems like the ores that I mined at before don't generate back. I'd imagine not, because ore doesn't grow back. Not for thousands of millennium of years. But things generate back in the mines. Well, perhaps they do then. But perhaps they just take a bit longer in the quarry. Maybe. But phones shouldn't really be implemented where they are now, at least for another few years. The very least.
So I'm very focused. I'm in the mines right now, and I could die at any moment. Are you in the quarry? Yeah, I went over to the mines. Yeah. I'm rot bart. What? You're in the rot bart sitting place. Okay, are you alright? Mm-hmm. You sound a bit... angry. No, I'm hungry. You're hungry? Why don't you fix yourself mm -hmm. something to eat? Uh, there is something I can eat, you just, I just need to prepare it. Yeah, that's relatable. And I'm just quite hungry at the minute. Hmm. To say the least. So chances are I'm probably going to end up going, because I need to go and have food. Okay. Besides, it's an hour and 23 minutes into the phone call. It is? Yeah. Well, an hour and 24 minutes. So I'm going to have to go now to uh, have food. Okay. I'm just killing a moth. Bye. Nice, see nice talking to you all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have a good day, dude. My heart's pumping so hard. I hate going to the mines. I should we head back home. We can leave exploring the mines in the winter. Still. It's a shame that he had to go, because I can't think of commentary on my own. <laughs> well, I can try. But the sounds of like crickets and stuff kind of reminds me of the sounds of like uh, Japan at night, which is really cool. I really miss Japan. Like, uh, my grandmother has this uh, wooden cottage up in the mountains. And it's all really cool. Like, there's no light pollution or anything, so. The stars are really uh, just absolutely amazing. I think we'll do one more day and then call it a day. Oh, we missed. Dang it, we missed Jody's birthday. Oh, where on earth did it go? It's down here. Yeah. I don't think we can get any more pumpkins. I 
thought I heard a mob then. Those mobs just terrify me, to be honest. See if we can get any more pumpkins. And the fertilizer's still there. So whatever we do to replace these seeds, they're gonna be really nice and scrumptious. sound effects though. Okay, ducks, and the bundles. Because now we can complete bundle finally. And then we can go up here to see if we can get. Sorry, I'm just doing something kind of gross. But you guys don't need to know what it is to save your sanity. Because I don't want my little viewers. Little? No. My dearest viewers going insane from how gross I am. If that's even possible. Excuse me? Another preserved straw. That would be handy actually. Animal bundle, duck egg, or a large goat's milk. I can actually play that tune on the piano. It's quite nice. I could name the notes if I tried, but yeah, we missed Jodie's birthday. Dang it. Well, it's Abigail's birthday tomorrow, so we can be sure not to miss that. Invasive crown species, stones, now it take 13 days, that will take us to day 25, that'll be fine. Got to sell the jam and honey. <laughs> that scene in the corpse bride is quite touching. That reminds me of another thing. Um, I did something really weird, and in a flight, I. Uh, watch someone else's screen <laughs> on this really long flight um, that's why there were screens on board for entertainment there was a flight from Japan and I ended up watching Doraemon's um, 
one of the Doraemon films on someone else's screen and it was it just made me cry to be honest so I shan't spoil it because I don't remember the names of the characters and I don't really remember anything about it <laughs> I just remember that there were these okay spoiler alert skip ahead if you don't want to hear this but there were these bunny creatures that were born like were living on the moon and Um, they were getting captured by these people who wanted to harness their bunny power, their bunny magic power. And, um, do some evil stuff. I think destroy a world. It's like classic evil juju. I'm still thinking that I hear um, moths and it's really unnerving me. <laughs> right, that's... Um, wait, did all my chickens die? Why did I only get three eggs and why are there only... Hopefully none of my chickens died. There was food left of them. I asked pale. I got told off by my mother for not eating. Which, I mean, it's okay. She is. I need she is. A single loom. Still nothing. Oh. Silly wolf forge. But who are your favourite Tim Burton characters? Because I think mine was the bride from the Corpse Bride. Because she just had such powerful energy to her. Even though she was betrayed and left for dead, <laughs> but she had she got her revenge, which was an important thing. I believe she did at least. an oil maker but not the sewing machine I believe yeah well, we have access to someone else's sewing machine so that's fine um 
I don't know what to do. Right, we are gonna go to Marnie's, but I think it's a bit too late to go to Marnie's. Uh, what can we do? Could X some things. No. Press the home. Press the X. Where on earth is my X? I'm not a very happy Gimli. I've lost my axe. Oh, there it is. It just wasn't sorted properly. And um, we need to scythe. And I believe I know where it is. If only these gave star fruit. I'll need to look up how to make how to get star fruit at some point. Okay. We're gonna call this episode here, guys. Um, hope you remember that's Abigail's birthday next time or tomorrow. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. I sure did. And it was nice for Academy to join us. But yeah, hope you all have a good day, or a good night, or a good morning. Who knows? Time is relevant. Adios.